Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to speak about the science of a healthy mind. How can we tell that our mind is healthy or unhealthy? And this is a spiritual perspective. <clears throat> Certainly, uh, people in different fields of um, mind research have different opinions about <clears throat> what the healthy and unhealthy mind is or should be. So from a spiritual perspective, a healthy mind is the mind devoid of thoughts, the mind which is undisturbed. The signs of an unhealthy mind include fragmented mind, the mind that cannot persist in one direction. So a sign of a healthy mind is the mind which is absorbed within itself. And this is the only criteria, the most important criteria. A healthy mind is not dissociated mind, is not detached mind. It is the mind which is aligned with the higher consciousness. It is the mind which is aligned with the body and exists fully occupying the body. Occupying the body means fully aware of the body. So this awareness stretches beyond one's physical unit. It's awareness that permeates kind of throughout one's existence. So once one perceives the world as one's own extension or emanation of one's consciousness, and this is not just a mental or imaginary projection, it is the perception. It means one is within, but one is very, very considerate over one's environment. One is considerate and aware of one's own actions. It is very different from one being constantly in a mode of self-judgment, because when there is this after thought, let's say you do something, perform some actions, interact with people, then you have after thoughts. Was I right? Was I wrong? Did I do well? Didn't I do well? So all these Thoughts and self-judgment is a sign of an unhealthy mind, a mind that requires healing. Now, whatever we accept in this day and age, in this age of corruption, self-destruction, and um, karmic payback, whatever we consider in this age normal, healthy, from the highest spiritual standpoint is far from that. So the sign of a healthy mind is the mind is tranquil, equanimous, peaceful, blissful. It's fully aware of the body. It coordinates the body. An unhealthy mind results in the, you may say, dysregulated, not well-coordinated actions. People with unhealed, imbalanced mind cannot feel comfortable in their body. They can't dance properly. They are not feeling free in self-expression. Their actions are forced. They either copycat someone's actions. They try to be like someone else. They try to acquire other people's mannerisms. These are all the signs of the unhealthy mind. The unhealthy mind is suppressed. It exists in some sort of a suppressed, contracted state. This contracted state is stressful mode. And it permeates one's body. One is also emotionally dysregulated. One's mind either has or exists on a negative wave or on a positive wave. One is not fully aligned. One is not balanced between the positive and negative and tends to run into extremes. Another sign of an unhealthy mind is a mind which attaches, clings, needs, craves, easily addicted to whichever element within the projected reality where a person a substance, um, an idea, and 
An unhealthy mind, unfortunately, is not coherent, is not consistent. It jumps from one onto the other because it is not aligned with the higher self. So it does not receive inner fulfillment. And it is the mind that appears as an energy or energetic vampire, unwholesome self that needs and depends on the energy supply from the outside world, from the reality that it emanates, but yet is ignorant of that process of being the creator of one's own reality. And it's not that it creates consciously, because there's difference between a conscious creator and the <clears throat> unconscious manifester, which is a compulsive, unhealthy mind being disconnected on the level of awareness from the fact that it emanates and the external circumstances and people and reactions and interactions and reflection is its own manifestation. So that awareness is not there. And until one turns within and experiences the alignment even for a short while one is not able to initiate healing for many people spiritual truth spiritual awakening becomes the point of healing or the initiation into this self healing where the self is that higher awareness but it is perceived when the mind turns within and one is fully in the body up in an absorbed state so one realizes at that moment that one is nourished only through inner alignment being fulfilled by one's natural being and once one is outside of the self one can find only temporary fulfillment or whichever joy or pleasure one experiences is only temporary and yet a healthy mind does not seek attention, validation, or fulfillment from the outside world. It does not seek knowledge or truth or spirituality from the outside world. A healthy mind clearly realized or has clearly realized that the fulfillment lies in one's own being. This being is absolutely thoughtless, emotionless. It's just utter contentment. And so when one is in this contentment, one is in a concealed mode. When one has compulsion to go into the projected reality, again to create, again to go into this creative mode, external expansion or manifestation or engaging or interaction with the external reality one is again in a mode of energy loss the loss of one's vitality and also dispersion fragmentation the unhealthy mind is always fragmented and dispersed because it's in the dispersed and fragmented mode in the mode of creation which is unnecessary engagement with the illusionary or projected reality. And yet one does not see the projected reality as an illusion. One perceives it as something different outside of oneself and creates sort of a distance, antagonistic or antagonizes or attaches or codependents on it. And thus one remains in this so-called mental and emotional delusion. And this is the primary sign of um, unhealthy mind. So when we speak in terms of unhealthy mind, it's the mind that needs balance. And depend, depending on the scale of this imbalance, one will be either functional in the world or mentally insane uh, and incapable of taking care of themselves or being a part of the society. <clears throat> Yet the society itself in its majority in its great greatest majority i would say is mentally imbalanced 
because we believe that having constant race of thoughts, um, anxiety, restlessness, emotional ups and downs is normality when it's a sign of an unhealthy mind, a mind that needs healing. And the majority of people would need that healing. But no matter what type of feeling or what type of healing we receive from the outside, the actual healing is possible and permanent. I mean, in terms of permanence, permanent healing is possible only when there is a realization from the outside, when one can register one's own delusional patterns, limitations, one's compulsive patterns of behavior, addictive modes, clinging modes, uh, scattered attention, um, those unhealthy waves and undercurrents that arise uh, from within, within one's consciousness and push one's mind into um, either mental projection or physical action or some sort of um, uh, imbalanced action. A lot of times, uh, a sign of a unhealed or better said, imbalanced, diseased mind is some form of self-limitation, repression, uh, control. So the unhealthy mind will always tend to control because it, it, it comes from trauma. The desire to control is a traumatic response. All of these signs that are mentioned here are traumatic responses to the projected reality, which arise from the delusion of one's assumption about the reality being outside of oneself. And so until one restores this perception to the natural aligned equanimous perception of reality, one will always be in this mode of delusion and imbalance because one will think that the projected reality is conditioned to something else or one is different from the projected reality or special or, or the chosen one or will antagonize with that projected reality or will refuse to take responsibility for one's own actions by blaming the projected reality, being in that victimized state. So whether one is assuming to be oneself to be a hero or a victim or a savior or pleaser or a person who tries to change and save the world, all of these are the notions of the unhealthy, misaligned, diseased, delusional mind. And as long as it's there, one will live from that delusional standpoint or limited in other words, or in spiritual sense from the limited egoic perspective. And as long as one is gliding along this triangle, one will not be able to understand truth, spirituality, authentic spirituality and liberate oneself. And liberation does not need to be you know, something supernatural. But as long as one is imprisoned in this triangle, or as long as one is in this imbalanced mode of whatever I've mentioned previously, one is in bondage, in bondage of one's own unhealed, unhealthy, imbalanced, misaligned mind consciousness, and the body suffers. The body suffers because one's delusional mind pushes the body into different directions. And then the body gets used to this type of attitude, pattern, lifestyle, and starts being codependent on temporary supplies. And emotions and thoughts are the primary signs of a delusional and healed mind, the presence of emotions and thoughts because these are natural faculties which can be employed consciously, but a healed, aligned consciousness is free from any movements within it. It's aligned, it remains in peace, 
it's absolutely aligned with its body. Its body is smooth, is deeply coordinated by the consciousness itself, and there is selfless being residing in the body, not the addicted being, not the obsessed being, not a an anxious or restless being, not a being who is constantly worried, obsesses, tries to get something, emotionally clingy or needy, or upset, or happy, excited, or looks for some validation or supply, seeks for attention, or craves for something. Whatever I mention now is, are all the signs of an unhealthy, balanced mind. And I hope that this video help, helps some of you to assess yourself with awareness and maybe right away or in time initiate the process of self-healing by becoming more aware of your unhealthy patterns by turning more within and resorting to no, no, no action, no attention seeking, no validation seeking, or going cold turkey on trying to engage with projected reality by following this inner compulsion or any form of compulsion or obsession that comes or arises from within because of the stories, some kind of a thought patterns or feelings and emotions arising. If you feel pain, focus within, allow it without a story. If you feel like your mind cannot stop, focus on the body. Refocus, read something that can help you to absorb into the mind, restrain the body from movement. You wanna go and engage, party, but you know it's unhealthy for you. It causes you imbalance. So you restrain yourself. You stay, you go to at home, you go to the shower, you go to sleep. So you do the opposite. And at first it will feel unnatural because you will need to exercise will. Because at this point, your will is under, is overpowered under the power of the unhealed, unhealthy, disturbed, emotionally disturbed, or otherwise disturbed mind. Sometimes you yourself engage in activities like reading some nonsense, scaring yourself unnecessarily, watching something that excites you, or listening to something that excites you or imbalances. So abstain from these activities for the sake of your healing. And understand that the true mind is absolutely free in its nature. It's free and it's responsible and aware. And it will never push its body, its body or its itself into any kind of suspicious activities or activities that will drain it, that will turn out to be detrimental for its balance and longevity. So the healthy mind is having the qualities of peace, healthy self-love and respect, which do not need to be announced, do not seek validation from the outside. It's a composed mind, self-fulfilled, blissful, equanimous, still. And because of this alignment, one can recognize the traumas which will arise like unhealthy waves, like unhealthy suggestions, like unhealthy compulsions. And because you will be aware of it, you will be able to choose to exercise your will and overpower them or to let them lead you or mislead you or to go along with these compulsions and then have a result of that. And mostly the results are negative because they're, they appear on your face, on the condition of your body, on the condition of your mind. So the choice is always with you. Thank you very much and stay healthy and focused within.